sing a song Joyfully Here we are Join together as we sing We'll always be Join me now as friends To celebrate The brotherhood we share All as one Keep the fire burning Keep the life we can And we'll all join in and sing Here we are All together as we sing a song Joyfully, here we are Join together as we pray We'll always be In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit Amen The grace and peace of God our Father And the Lord Jesus be with you all And with your spirit My dear sisters and brothers, today as you know, we are celebrating this 26th Sunday in Ordinary Times. And on this 26th Sunday, the readings are very powerful because they remind us as Christian women and men of our duty towards our neighbor and that we cannot worship and pray to God without also taking into account the needs of our neighbors, those who live around us, those who live in this planet. And so we will see, particularly in the Gospel reading, which I shall elaborate a little bit more later, how the parable of Lazarus the poor man who encounters a very rich man there, how it plays out and what lessons we can learn from it. Bearing this in mind, let us begin our worship on this Sunday morning and let us ask for God's forgiveness for the many times that we offend God and we offend our neighbor. We say together, I, I confess, confess to Almighty God and, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my, you, my brothers, brothers and sisters, to, to pray, pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, may he forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let there be peace and joy for all 
in whom he is pleased. Glory, glory, glory to God in the highest. Glory, glory, glory to God in the highest. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Glory, glory, glory to God in the heart. Lord Jesus, Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, You take away our every sin. Have mercy on us. Glory, glory, glory to God in the highest. Glory, glory, Glory to God in the highest. You alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. With the Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Glory, glory, glory to God in the highest. Glory, glory, glory to God in the highest. Let us pray. O God, who manifests your almighty power above all the pardoning and showing of mercy, bestow upon us, we pray, your grace abundantly and make those hastening to attain your promises theirs to the heirs to the treasures of heaven through our lord jesus christ your son who lives and reigns with you and the holy spirit one god forever and ever amen, amen. A reading from the prophet Amos. Thus says the Lord Almighty, Woe to those who are at ease in Zion and to those who feel secure on the mountain of Samaria. Woe to those who lie on beds of ivory and stretch themselves out on their couches and eat lambs from the flock and calves from the midst of the stall, who sing idle songs to the sound of the harp and like David, invent for themselves instruments of music, who drink wine in bowls and anoint themselves with the finest oils, but are not grieved over the ruin of Joseph. Therefore, they shall now be the first of those who go into exile, and the revelry of those who stretch themselves out shall pass away. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Let your response be, Come, Lord, and save us together. Come, Lord, and save us. It is the Lord who preserves fidelity forever, who does justice to those who are oppressed. It is he who gives bread to the hungry, the Lord who sets prisoners free. Your response? Come, Lord, and save us. It is the Lord who opens the eyes of the blind, the Lord who raises up those who are bowed down. It is the Lord who loves the just, the Lord 
who protects the stranger. Your response? Come, Lord, and save us. The Lord upholds the orphan and the widow, but thwarts the path of the wicked. The Lord will reign forever. The God of Zion from age to age. Your response? Come, Lord, and save us. Keep the commandment until the appearing of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to Timothy. As for you, O my O men of God, pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, steadfastness, gentleness. Fight a good fight of the faith. Take hold of the internal life to which you were called and about which you made the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. I charge you in the presence of God, who gives life to all things, and of Christ Jesus, who in his testimony before Pontius Pilate made a good confession, to keep the commandment unstained and free from reproach until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ which he will display at the proper time. He who is the blessed and only sovereign, the King of kings and Lord of lords, who alone has immortality, who dwells in unapproachable light, whom no one has ever seen or can see. To him be honor and internal dominion. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks to God. Kindly stand for the gospel acclamation. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah, hallelujah, by the blood of Christ we stand. Every tongue, every tribe, every people, every land, giving glory, giving honor. Giving praise unto the Lamb of God. Giving praise unto the Lamb of God. The Lord is with you. And with, with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory, Glory to, to you, o Lord. At that time, Jesus said to the Pharisees, there was a rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen and who feasted sumptuously every day. And at his gate, there lay a poor man named Lazarus covered with sores who desired to be fed with what fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, even the dogs came and licked his sores. The poor man died and was carried by the angels to Abraham's side. The rich man also died and was buried. And in Hades, being in torment, he lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham far off and Lazarus at his side. And he called out, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus to dip the end of his finger in water and cool my tongue with it, for I am in anguish in these flames. But Abraham said, Child, remember that you in your lifetime received many good things, and Lazarus in like manner bad things. But now he is comforted here, and you are in anguish. And besides all this, between us and you, 
is a great chasm that has been fixed in order that those who would pass from here to you may not do so and none may cross over from there to us. And he said, Then I beg you, Father, to send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, so that they may be warned by him, lest they also come into this place of torment. But Abraham said, they have Moses and the prophets whom they should listen to. And he said, No, Father Abraham, but if someone goes to them from the dead, they will repent. He said to him, If they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, neither will they be convinced of someone who should rise from the dead. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, to you Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. My dear sisters and brothers, as you must have gathered from these readings, these are readings with very powerful messages for all of us. Perhaps we have grown familiar with these messages because we hear them so often in our worship, in our proclamation of the Word of God, in our study of the Bible, etc. But the messages remain ever so relevant, even in our time, even in this century. And so what is the message, especially if we refer to the gospel of today? The parable is a parable of contrasts. It contrasts the very rich man and the very poor man whose name is given to us and whose name was Lazarus. So on the one hand, there is this very rich man who lives in a palace, who eats sumptuously, as the gospel says. And there is this Lazarus, a man whose skin has broken into sores. So he is a man who is continuously suffering. And he lay at the entrance of the house of the rich man, and he begs for food. This is one contrast. The other contrast is, we see that the rich man, although he enters the gates of his house every day and may, maybe many times in the day, he does not notice at all this poor man who is lying there. However, the poor man who is lying there notices everybody who enters the gate. Particularly, he notices the owner of the house who enters the gate, and he salutes him and asks for alms. So you see that the rich man has no need, so to speak, to recognize anybody. He can manage life with his riches all by himself, so he thinks. He does not need the help of this poor man or any other people around. And so he tends to ignore others. He just bypasses them. But not so with the rich man, not so with the poor man. And now, as the parable says very well, both of them die. And again, you see a contrast. The poor man, Lazarus, is welcomed into paradise. And Abraham, our father in faith, welcomes him and takes care of him, so to speak. And the rich man also dies, but he's consigned to the flames of hell where he has to burn and suffer for his sins and negligence on this earth. And so a contrast of rewards for the two persons. 
And the last step in this parable that we notice, there are many more things, but we shall not develop them all, is we notice that now the rich man recognizes for the first time the poor man Lazarus. And he asks God a favor that he send Lazarus to his brothers on earth so that Lazarus may warn them against any, dis against any calamity. And so this is the first time the rich man starts to recognize other people. He recognizes that he needs God's help and mercy. This recognition is very important. And so we come back to this parable to ask ourselves, what are the lessons for us? And the key lesson, I think, for us is God reminding us that we always depend on one another in life. That riches and reputation and power does not really solve the problem of the human who is seeking for happiness in life, who is seeking the face of God. But what we need is we have to be aware. We have to recognize that around us there are people who can whom we can help in our own way, even if we are not rich, even if we are not powerful, we can do little acts of kindness. We can reach out to our neighbor, and in doing so, we recognize the other. What is the meaning of this phrase? We recognize the other. It means we recognize the presence of God among us. This is the key to this parable that the rich man did not recognize that he was rich, he was very comfortable because of God's blessings. He thought this was of his own doing. And therefore, the message of Jesus is always the same. Namely, that we remind ourselves constantly that we come from God and we go back to God. This is our responsibility. And so in this context of the gospel of today and both of the readings that we heard, we pray that our own awareness may increase in life, that we may recognize the face of God in day-to-day -day events of life so that truly through this recognition, we bring to others also the love and the message of God. Amen. Let us now rise and say the profess our faith and say the Apostles' Creed together. I, I believe in God. God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us now bring our prayers and petitions to the altar of God and let us pray as a community of faithful people that God listen to our prayers. Let your response be, Lord, graciously hear our prayers. Lord, Lord graciously, graciously hear, hear our, our prayers. prayers. For the Pope and all the ordained ministers of the church, that they may become messengers of God's love, mercy, and justice, and may never ignore or neglect the sick and the poor, 
We pray. Lord, graciously hear our prayer. For all Christians, that they may hold fast to the faith they have received and live it with ardor by showing compassion and mercy towards the poor and the suffering. We pray. Lord, Lord graciously hear our prayer. For the rulers of all nations and all the civil authorities, that they may care for the poor, the elderly, and the sick in society, and that they may never become blind or selfish, but work honestly to alleviate the sufferings of the poor. We pray. Lord, Lord graciously hear our prayer. For the poor, the sick, and the differently abled, that the government and the civil authorities may take care of them. We pray. Lord, Lord graciously, graciously hear our prayer. For all of us present at this Eucharistic celebration, that we may conduct our lives, always keeping in mind our eternity and never close our eyes to the needs of our poor neighbors. We pray. Lord, graciously hear our prayer. Lord God, we bring you these prayers and petitions as a community. We pray that having been inspired by your word this morning, we may also learn to reach out to our neighbors and learn to be of help to those in pain and in suffering. This is our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that these our offerings will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the sacrifices instituted by your commands. And through the sacred mysteries, which we celebrate with dutiful service, graciously complete the sanctifying work 
by which you are pleased to save each one of us. This is our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord is with you. And with, with your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up, up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right and just. just. It is truly right and just our duty and salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For when your children were scattered afar by sin, through the blood of your Son and the power of the Spirit, you gathered them again to yourself. That a people formed as one in the unity of the Trinity made the body of Christ the temple of the Holy Spirit, might, to the praise of your manifold wisdom, be manifest in the church, and so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we sing. fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Let us now proclaim the mystery of faith. Savior, Savior of the world, for oh, by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and to minister to you. Humbly we pray, 
that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Philip Neri, our Bishop, and all the clergy and the people of God. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on our soul, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And let us now pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our, Our Father, Father, who art Lord in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name, thy, thy kingdom come, thy will, will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread, 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 and forgive, forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive, forgive those who trespass, trespass against us. And, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from all evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await in joyful hope the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us share with one another the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Lamb of Lamb God, God, you take, you take away the sins, sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I'm, I'm not, not worthy that you should enter under my roof, roof but, but only you only say, say the word, and, and my soul, soul shall be healed. Body and blood of Christ bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Since we cannot receive Jesus at this moment sacramentally, let us make an act of spiritual communion and experience the presence of Jesus who is in us, who dwells in our hearts, who abides in us. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated 
from you. Amen. We rise for the final prayer. Grant us, Almighty God, that we may be refreshed and nourished by the sacrament which we have received, so as to be transformed into what we consume. This is our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord is with you and with and your spirit. spirit. And may Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us all go in peace to love God and to love one another. Thanks be to God. Thank you very much. Yes, eternal peace is come.